Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show and the day of the double comp. Good morning, Terry T. How you doing? Sup, Grimmy G. I'm all right. You? I like these nicknames. Uh, every, every week we seem to bust out a new nickname. Um, comment below and let us know which is your favourite nickname. And whilst you're clicking on stuff on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're doing new things. We're bringing up little short videos, cool little features. If you're not subscribed, you miss out. So do subscribe. Join the Climbing Daily community. Uh, we'd love to have you. Okay, now I mentioned two comps. The second comp's yes. coming later in the show. The first comp is from Japan. The Japan Bouldering Cup saw a host of big names and Olympic qualifiers competing. This is the first bouldering event held in Japan in 2021, as reported by Gripped Indoor Climbing. For the women, Ai Mori only just made it into the finals, but she stepped up her game and took an impressive win. Miho Nanaka came in second, while Futaba Ito took third. For the men, it was Kokoro Fuji who came first, topping all four boulders in just six tries. Olympian Tomoa Narasaki came second, while Yushioki Ogato was third. I was lucky enough to visit Japan a couple of years ago, and I cannot describe to you the indoor and the comp climbing scene there. The levels of these guys is just unbelievable. Just like, yeah, so cool competition. I would love to go to Japan one day and follow a competition like that. That'd be wicked. Yeah, I mean, I'm Ari at 17. Pretty impressive, right? Is she the best boulderer in Japan? Woman boulderer in Ooh, Japan? Big statements from Terry T there. <laughs> what was interesting, and I said it a little bit in that voiceover, she actually got into the finals in sixth yeah. place. But then I saw one commenter saying that that actually might have helped her because she climbed first, which mm. meant perhaps the holds were less greasy from everyone up. Who knows? But was great it job, a tactic? My. Maybe it was. It's it a bit of a risky one. As though. a hacker, imagine Ooh. timing it so you just scrape into the finals. So yeah. That, yeah. Too so you risky. don't get tired or not? Like you don't get tired in the semifinals and you're fresh for the finals. It's true. It is. I think coaches around the world would just be going, no, 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 stop. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're moving on to Fontainebleau. Fanatic Climbing reports that Lucien Martinez has sent the Big Island 8C, calling it his first 8B plus boulder. The classic boulder was originally put up by Dave Graham as an 8C. Later, in 2010, Vincent Ponchon added two more moves at the start, but kept the same grade. With more than 20 ascents, this is the most repeated 8C in the world. So is it officially a soft 8C? That's an 8B plus now? I wish everyone would leave the Big Island alone. Like, honestly, it's like, okay, so when I started climbing, the Big Island was always there, right? And it was the 8C, and it was yeah. that thuggy style thing that personally I suck at. So uh, leave it alone, okay? It's not AB, plus it's 8C, and having never seen it or touched the holds, I can definitely vouch <laughs> for that. <laughs> what do you think? 8C? AB plus? Mm, since it's a boulder and I've seen many videos, I'm going to say uh, it's 8C because it just looks savage. It does look savage, doesn't it? Uh, right, mountaineering <laughs> news now and a first ascent in Switzerland. Danny Arnold and Roger Shiley have made the first ascent of Exocet, a mixed climb in Latabrunnen, Switzerland, as reported by Planet Mountain. The route is 600 meters long with difficulties up to water ice 6 plus. There's an exciting sounding overhanging chimney third pitch that requires aid and a tough ice section to finish it. The route has a massive wedged block, similar to the famous Exocet route on Serre Santat in Patagonia, hence the name of the route in Switzerland. Do go and have a little look at Planet Mountain for the write-up of that one, mainly uh, for their descriptions, because there's one pitch where literally no gear. It was like this free hanging icicle and they were concerned about placing gear because it wasn't attached. All right. I wouldn't be climbing it. Well, I mean, they're like super rad dudes that um, <laughs> trust water that turned into ice. <laughs> yes, true. That is something I also struggle with. But like, yeah, imagine going up route and being like, I won't protect it because it's too dangerous, but I will climb it. That's absolutely fine. Uh, but nice one, guys. Good first ascent. <laughs> Moving on to some safe ascents. Uh, let's go to our 9A roundup. As reported on 8A.NU, Stefano Carnati has made the second ascent of A Present for the Future, a 9A at Madonna della Rota in Italy. Stefano comments that unfortunately the rock quality at the bottom of the climb isn't that great and he broke three holds, creating two new cruxes. 
Adamandra first sent this route 11 years ago, in 2010, saying it was a possible 9A+, and Stefano gave it a hard 9A. Moving on to Spain, where Yannick Floe has done his first 9A, and possibly the first repeat of Wild Publico, first put up by Alex Megas. The route starts off on monos, but after falling four times at the crux, he still had to fight the pump through the last part, which is about 7A. Nice to see the 9A roundup uh, back. We had a little pause, didn't we? Yeah, I think it was more due to like COVID restrictions and uh, traveling around, mm. but there are ways around it that's legal, <laughs> I suppose. Terry's been tunneling under borders just to get a sport climbing fix. I'm really trying. She's trying. Uh, now, we're talking about tunneling under borders uh, mm. in a tenuous link. COVID has obviously affected a lot of people and sometimes it's difficult to know which COVID rules and regulations will land you in trouble. Check out this story from Scotland. In Scotland, two climbers got into difficulty when climbing minus two gully on Ben Nevis. This story was found on the Press and Journal website. 20 members of a rescue team attended the incident and the climbers were rescued around 4.15pm. They were taken safely to Fort William and received fixed penalty notices for breaking coronavirus regulations. The support manager Malcolm McIntyre was interviewed for the website and as part of a longer interview said, people should be sensible take it easy and not push themselves. Now, I brought up this story not to have a go at the climbers. Uh, it's none of my business. I don't know the rules and regulations, but it is a sort of interesting moral thing, this one, because we're in a situation where some of us are allowed to do things, some aren't allowed to do yeah. things. But if you are, it's that moral thing of should I be? Because if it goes wrong, then do I put pressure on hospitals? I don't know. What's your personal feelings on it? Stay within your limits, like yeah. the guy said. I mean, yeah, like it's it's... It's easy to want things to go out there and do stuff, but if you stay within your limits and you know try not to push it, like be careful as always. You did it. I mean, that's my personal view on it. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, he's what tricky. can you do about it? Yeah, because like, I know like that's my personal view, and, and except you know I've definitely occasionally pushed things because because and also like things can go wrong really quickly like yeah, those guys yeah, were on minus easily. two gully not particularly difficult yeah. stuff went wrong so it's i don't know it has to i mean you have to base it on the regulations of your area and then make a decision from there but uh yeah, yeah. interesting story Yes, and we are moving on to Slovenia, where Red Bull and 360 Holds have teamed up for a pretty special project. Red Bull and the company 360 Holds teamed up to create a 13 pitch multi pitch on a chimney in Slovenia. The difficulties range from 7B up to 8B+. This was a real challenge for Janja and Domin, since it was their first multi-pitch. So this isn't really news, I mean, they did it back in uh, September. Mm. Um, but it was big in the media, obviously, Red Bull pushed it and all. And uh, yeah, what did you think about it? Did you watch it? I, I did watch it, I did like it. Um, th there was something you put in, uh, you found out, because a website was criticizing them, weren't they? A little bit. Essentially just saying that all this energies and effort to put up 13 pitches. It was a lot of work. It was like a two month effort, uh, thousands of holds, and it all got stripped down afterwards. I okay. guess they just wanted to see that effort put into climbing elsewhere or like still promoting climbing, but like maybe not for something just yeah, momentarily. I don't know if I agree with that. Like, it, okay, I, look, Red Bull videos are Red Bull videos, right? We get what they are. Yeah. They're like big concepts. Lots of budget, whatever, they put loads into it and then, you know, that's it. The people who write that may be taking it a bit seriously. It's like, yes, they could have perhaps developed a community or they could have done these things, but like, where do you stop on that one? Like, because how many Red Bull videos are we like, that's ridiculous, but really cool? Yeah, I mean, the elevator guy, the one that speed climbed against an elevator. I oh, like, yeah, it okay. came out what, last year. Like, yeah, cool concept, unnecessary, obviously, but still really cool. And like, it was a real challenge for Yanya and Domin. And I think they just showed like, how tough a multi pitch can be, you know? I saw it, I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, whatever your opinion is. And then I saw yeah. the criticism, and I was a bit like, come on, are we, are, we that, are we taking ourselves that seriously? I don't know. Like, perhaps there are more environmental issues or like community issues based around it, um, which I, I'm not aware of, which is mm. fair enough. I'm sure you let me know in the comments below. But um, I enjoyed it. And I like the fact that climbing suddenly has this massive platform every yeah. now and again, you know? Yeah, that video yeah. is huge. True. Okay. Nine B counter. <gasps> Thank you. 
There is nothing, but we do have 90 Counter news. I like that cup sit there. That was very dramatic. It was like Stop. nothing. I'm disappointed. Well, I'm disappointed, but then this is the whole point. 90 Counter, it's a rare thing. Like this is a jewel of an ascent. But we have news because last week we said that we wanted to continue the ethos of the counters. Yes. But we need someone else to do the work for us unpaid uh, because uh, <laughs> we're changing up. And we kind of have a, a winner for that competition, don't we? We found David. <laughs> no, I mean, David uh, commented last week in, in the comment section and also dropped us a message on Instagram. So I guess he's the winner and he has some plans to spice it up. So... Yay! David, congratulations. You are the official, uh, what do we call it? 9B counter master or master. something? Um, David, this is, as we mentioned a few times, an unpaid position, but the prestige, frankly, that comes with this is uh, everlasting, lifelong, and will be on your CV. So congratulations. We'll be in touch. Shop stuff, and this week, La Sportiva is back in stock with uh, the models of Theory, La Sportiva Comp and Squamas. So all sizes available, check them out. Okay, that's, that's the sort of the new, but yes. I want to counter the new with the old. Okay. Uh, which is that we are also doing a sort of a sale of some of the older models. Mm. Really good prices. We're thinking tarantulas, um, geckos, maverinks. Oh, I have those. Yeah, you exactly. Good shoe. So uh, there's lots of sort of slightly older models of La Sportiva that are at amazing prices. I'm just looking at it now. Like some around about 50 euros. Oh. If you want an indoor climbing shoe, perhaps. Or to be honest, like old models of La Sportiva shoes, just as good. Some of the hardest routes in the world have been sent using them. Yeah. I mean, the La Sportiva Finale, great shoe for like multi pitches and stuff. Agreed, banging shoe, and it's on sale. So uh, grab yourself a bargain or grab yourself a new shoe, whatever. It's a super time to be shopping. Oh gosh, terrible. Content. Uh, once again, it's just you and me. So let's do a content roundup. Do you, do you want to kick things off? With a KK, with a content couch. Um, yes, because this week we have an exciting ice climbing finals movie. Um, I mean, I'm not too keen on ice climbing. It just looks miserable and it's hard and too many things flying around. But I gotta say, I really enjoyed the edit and the songs are cool. And uh, yeah, check out the clip. So that comp took place uh, two weekends ago, mm -hmm. and it's part of the UIAA sort of ice climbing circuit. Wasn't a World Cup, but as you said, crazy moves, um, overhanging ice. How, how often did you get to see that? Why? Why, indeed. <laughs> but it is cool. Uh, that's on Climbing Daily. Talking about the main channel, Epic TV, uh, Cold House Media, vlog is back. Josh breaks his foot. What? Yeah, I know. Uh, drama. Um, so, well, I won't say any more. Check out the teaser.
cool video but yeah josh get better soon yeah mate and they are taking a bit of a break from vlogging for a while okay. uh, but don't panic i know you guys are keen on this it's because we're working on a brand new series based in america gonna be a bit different uh it's i, I can't give too much away about it actually but it is uh uber exciting uh that's coming soon so have a little cold house media break just de cold house media saturate and get psyched for the new series coming soon to epic tv we have to do comment of the week. Uh, we do, do we? Yes, we do. We do, we do, we do. Last week you sang, I feel like the world needs a break from that. Eek! That's <laughs> nice, for once. Could you conduct me while I sing? Uh, sure, what tune do you want? Just whatever you want. Just like, let's just bust out some like, low fi vibes. C that, what do you hold? Comment, comment of the week, it's comment. Uh. I don't know. Is that, that it? I don't know what this was doing. <laughs> anyway, what's your comment? <laughs> uh, mine's from Chris Stenning, and he says, uh, when are you going to send some Epic TV climbers to the Falkland Islands? No COVID restrictions once the 10-day isolation is done. Countless amounts of virgin, unexplored, unlogged vlog to varying degrees of stability and grade to get stuck into. Um, I think I picked this because I am pining for travel. I really am. I know it's a sort of my problem, but I, I you know, I miss it. I really miss it. Uh, so Falkland Islands, I never even considered climbing there I would love to go there so if you live on the Fulton Islands and you want to um, put us up if you know an airline company who wants to pay for us to go get in touch or if you live in another weird place or by boat you want me to go by boat to the folk well I know we're gonna have a lot of throwing up shots that's true just vomiting everywhere if you want to see us vomit <laughs> uh, then hook us up Chris cheers mate um, anyway my comment is about anyway because Marco said teresa i challenge you not to say the word anyway for for one entire climbing daily episode oh. see i had this in mind for the whole show so i've been trying not to say it but it just became one of those words it's like an, when someone tells you you're doing something it's like an elephant in the room it's hard to yeah, not like then do it the red button yeah it's just like it's there you want to push it um, anyway so i don't I'm think sorry. you say anyway too much anyway 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 you think hey anyway uh -huh. hey <laughs> Whew. Right, we're done. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Hit that big red button. Uh, join us because you if you don't, you're going to miss out on loads of content, videos, action, gear geek stuff. Please subscribe. We'll see you soon.